Interest rates remained above 6.5% for the third week in a row. But what does that mean for the Dallas real estate market? My name is Michael. I'm a real estate agent in the Dallas area, and every Monday I make a weekly update covering all of Dallas County. We'll be covering both cities and zip codes so you know exactly what's going on in all of the Dallas area. We're looking for trends, which cities and zip codes are the hottest this week if you're maybe looking to sell your house, as well as if you're a buyer or investor, which cities and zip codes were the coolest this week if you're looking for an opportunity. We also track mortgage rates, mortgage purchase applications, as that's our best leading indicator of what demand is going to look like 30 to 90 days from now. We're looking at things like median list price, stays on market, how many homes had price drops, what inventory is looking like. So if any of that sounds like something you're into, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking to make a move in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. I've helped every one of these yellow dots find their little piece of Texas, and I'd love to help you too. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. All that info is in the description below. Okay, today is May 1st. Let's see what the data is telling us. This week, for the first time really all year, we had a bit of a pause, which may be nothing, or it may be the start of the market wanting to return to normal. But if you ask me, it's just a totally normal result of rates being above 6.5%. So let's start with rates. Okay, if you've been watching, you know that the 6.5% interest rate, that's kind of our line in the sand. When rates are above 6.5%, demand really dries up and we see less people applying for mortgages every week. When it drops below 65 and closer to 6, we see buyers flooding into the market, applying for mortgages. So that's why this is our best demand indicator. The purchase application data isn't out for this week yet, but the previous week with rates above 6.5%, we saw a 10% decrease in mortgage mortgage purchase applications that week. So you can think of that as a 10% decrease in demand, which is a lot. So like I said, the third week in a row, we had a week at 6.61. Then last week we started at 6.66. And this week we're starting at 6.59. So not a great improvement from last week. I don't expect a lot of demand is gonna come in this week. Like I said, unless we drop below that six and a half somehow this week. Also, as of today, May 1st, home buying just got a little more expensive for well-qualified buyers. That means if you have a good credit score and you're putting a bigger down payment, you're now gonna have higher fees. And I made a whole video on this last week. If you wanna check it out, learn more about it, you can click up here somewhere. Okay, let's move on to housing data. And we always start by looking at all of Dallas County as a whole and my favorite tool here is called the Market Action Index, and all it does is take all of these factors into account and puts them in one easy to read graphic. The way to read this graphic is this number 30 here. If it's below that, it's a buyer's market, and if it's above that, you're looking at how much of a seller's market is it. So like I said, for the first time this year, things have kind of been on a pause, and you can see that reflected here as this tiny sliver of white means we pretty much didn't move from last month. And you can see that also represented over here. See, the market action index has been saying it's more and more of a seller's market all the way up until right now. It's pretty much stalled out. It's been in 54 for three weeks, which not coincidentally, we're in the third week of rates above six and a half. So you can see exactly how rate sensitive buyers are right now. So looking at median list price, basically the same, went from 438 to 49. I would call that flat. Price of new listings had a little drop, but this one fluctuates a lot. Don't pay too much attention to that. Price per square foot continues to climb. Median days on market, let's see, from last week, 28, 28. So that didn't move at all. Price decreases. Again, not a significant change, but we went up a little bit. And this is the percent of houses that had a price decrease this week. So we went from 32.25 to 33.42. Both of those numbers are totally normal. There's nothing concerning about that. Inventory, this is the good news for buyers is that it's remaining flat. You definitely don't wanna see this go down anymore, but it's been remaining flat for well over a month or two. So that's good. Eventually you wanna see inventory start to climb. And if you start to see inventory climbing, that doesn't mean there's a market crash or anything. It means we're starting to get to a more normal market, which is something we really need. And if you wanna see all of this data for your specific zip code or city, and even specific price point, I can get you set up on this. So you can go down here, you can check your market segment. You can say, okay, my house is around 369. So I'm only gonna look at that price point. Okay, this is what my specific market is doing. My price is holding flat. Go to inventory. My inventory is starting to flatten out. So you can mess around with all this data yourself. Just leave me a comment, shoot me a text, whatever, I'll get you set up. Okay, now we're moving on to my favorite part. These are the top 10 charts. This is using that market action index to see exactly which cities and zip codes are the hottest, which ones are the coolest, which ones are moving up, which are moving down. And this is ranking out of all 84 zip codes of Dallas County. So let's start with the top 10 hottest cities. Grapevine, Louisville, Carrollton, Saxe, and Irving all remained in their same spots. Balch Springs actually moves up a spot. Grand Prairie actually jumps onto this list from nowhere all the way to number seven. So a big jump in the Grand Prairie market if you're looking to sell there. Richardson moves down two spots. Coppell jumps onto the list out of nowhere 
nowhere at number nine. Duncanville as well jumps onto the list out of nowhere and knocks off DeSoto. So if you live in one of these cities, you live in one of the top 10 hottest markets in all of Dallas County. But as we all know, every part of the city is not created equal. Some parts are hotter than others. So we always zoom in next to see the zip code. So looking at the top 10 hottest zip codes of all of Dallas County, and again, out of 84 zip codes. So if you're represented here, you are literally in one of the 10 hottest zip codes of all of Dallas County. So starting with Carrollton, 75007, that's number one. Grapevine, 76051. Irving, 75063. Dallas, 75252. Grand Prairie, 75052. Irving, 75062. Garland, 75044. Louisville, 75067. Richardson, 75080 and Saxe 75048. So if you live in one of these zip codes, you should have no problem selling your house. Now moving on to this last box, this is only looking at the last week. These two are 90 day moving averages, very reliable. This one is just a seven day average, so not reliable, that's why it's so squiggly. But you can just take a quick look here, 75019, 75051, 75007, 082, 089, 252-224-244-061 and 050. These were the 10 hottest zip codes specifically this week. Okay, now let's move on and do the same for the top 10 coolest markets. So if you're looking to buy something, these are gonna be the cities and zip codes where there's gonna be the best opportunity for you to get a deal. That means not multiple offers, probably not even having to offer full list price. Maybe you don't have to pay for title policy. This is where you're gonna wanna look. So looking at the coolest cities, Ferris, Seagaville, Sunnyvale, Red Oak, Dallas, and Lancaster all remain in their coolest spots. Wiley actually moves down one, which on this list is bad. That means it cooled off. Cedar Hill moved down one, bad for Cedar Hill, it cooled off. Mesquite actually heated up too, so that's good for Mesquite. It's trying to get off this list. And Rowlett remains in the number 10 spot as the hottest city on the coolest list. And I just always wanna point out, from the hottest to the coolest list, by the time you get to Rowlett at a 62.8, it's very close to being on the hottest list. So really, you're looking at Ferris, Seagaville, Sunnyvale, these in the 40s, that's really where the opportunity is. As you start getting into 50 and 60, yes, it's the coolest cities, but they're still really hot. So let's move on to the zip codes. And again, remember 30 and below is a buyer's market, so you wanna be close to 30, but all of these are actually pretty cool. The hottest zip code of this list is only at a 43.46. So if you're looking for a really good deal, you're definitely wanting to look in 75212. That is almost a buyer's market. Same in Ferris, 75125, 75203, 75209, 75230. And here's where we finally start to get above 40. Seagaville, 75159, Dallas, 75235, 75182. 75208 and 75220. So there are several zip codes in Dallas County that are almost buyer's markets. Moving on, again, this chart is not reliable. We just wanna see what were the coolest zip codes this week. 75219 was an extreme buyer's market just this week though. 75208, also buyer's market. 75042, buyer's market. And then we just start to get out of being a buyer's market at a 32 here with 75182. 75203, 75060, 75205, 75159, 75233, and 75212. Now let's quickly move on to inventory, and this one is the 90-day average, so it moves a little slower because this one is a seven-day average. So we're trying to see, are these numbers starting to curve up here? Then we'll see this side start to flatten out, and of course what we always want is inventory to climb because we are in an extremely supply-constrained environment, which is not good for anyone. Even if you're a seller and can get top dollar, it's not good because then it means you have nothing else to buy. So whether you're a buyer or seller, we need more inventory. And most of these markets are starting to curve up. The only one really that's not this week is probably Grand Prairie. You can see this is starting to flatten out. This is starting to take a little bounce. So you can see last week, this looked like it was headed straight down. Now it's taking a jump. That's great news. Dallas has definitely been flattening out. That's great. It's, I mean, it's starting to curve up a little. Wiley having a nice jump. Irving flattening. Richardson a little jump. Rowlett's definitely been curving up. So this is pretty good news. I mean, Carrollton still on a little bit of a drop, but you can tell it's decelerating. So we're looking for all of this trend to continue and a lot of these to start curving up. And that would be great news. Well, that's it, guys. If you got any value from this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're looking to buy or sell anywhere in the Dallas area, whether it's next week or next year, I'd love to connect. Just call, text, or shoot me an email. And I'll see you guys in the next video.